It's a thrill. I've been looking forward to this. I follow this man on social media a lot. If you're interested in good golf swings and stuff from the tour, this is your guy. It's Bob Grissett. Bob, thank you for your time. Welcome to our podcast. How are you doing? Hi, Mark. How are you? Great to be here. Yeah, it's good to have you. Um, one of the foremost instructors in Florida and the United States indeed. And and I found you by just searching golf swings and and the library you have on social media is incredible. And honestly, I was quite a, I was, I was quite um, excited this morning when you reposted something that I had done, I don't know, maybe a day or two ago. But that's beside the point. With uh, Mac. Yeah, for with Mac O'Grady. Exactly. Well, that's the thing. We've got Mac O'Grady to Trevino to Hogan to Tiger. You got them all in there, Rory. Um, and we're going to address some. But before we go there... For our global audience, please, please put yourself into perspective. Tell the folks a little bit about you. Well, I've been teaching golf for uh, many moons. Mm -hmm. um, have a have an interesting background in the sense that I was uh, very, very fortunate to work with some of the legends in the game. My uh, original teacher was Johnny Revolta yeah. uh, at yeah. Evanston uh -huh. Golf Club in Chicago. Uh -huh. uh, I went to college, the University of Miami, and and hook on hooked hooked up with. Uh, uh, Mr. Toski spent uh, four years with him. He's been on the uh, show too. I mean, you, you speak, you, you've, you've hit us with Johnny Revolta and Bob Toski. I mean, goodness gracious. This is like the whole of, <laughs> this is like Mount Rushmore of golf instruction here in the States. Yeah. Yeah. Very, 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 very fortunate. Um, and then, uh, you know, was able to work uh, with um, uh, uh, Johnny Miller's teacher, John Gertzen. Mm -hmm. who was at San Francisco Golf Club and then at the Monterey Peninsula Club uh, when I was on the West Coast. Um, and it's just been a, it's, you know, it's been a kind of a lifelong thing, um, working with um, continuing education, working with teachers, um, studying the golf machine, which I don't recommend that anybody read. <laughs> uh, but, uh, um, you know, it's just been a, it's been a non anything spent quite a bit of time with, uh, Andy Plummer and Mike Bennett. They're good friends. In fact, I help Mike with his swing periodically, not that it needs much help, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's been the adventure. And, uh, I got involved on Instagram. Uh, one of my, one of my students said, you should start posting. So I sort of started kind of late. Yeah. Uh, I didn't start posting anything until just a couple of years ago. And then I've kind of gone nuts. Um, well, in, in, in my phone, I have a library of uh, uh, just over 80,000 combination videos and photos. Uh, <laughs> they're not all trimmed and they're not all cataloged, but I generally what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll put them in by a, a particular swing fault. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's releasing the fourth and first accumulator, which we could get into, or yeah. it could be Ben Hogan, or it could be, uh, um, among many, many, many other titles. And, you know, so everything eventually gets logged into a particular area. And when I teach, whether it be online or whether it be, uh, live, uh, I always follow up those lessons, uh, with whatever drills I recommend. And they're all sent through WhatsApp. I use WhatsApp to, communicate and the way i do my online lessons is there uh i don't i don't like the idea of them sending a video and, and then me sending a video back so we actually have a live chat okay. on uh um whatsapp and we kind of make it similar to what a live lesson would be so the student is sent photographs with circles and lines and then we go into describing what i see and what we should what i think is the most important thing to work on now because i think that's the, the key thing in teaching is I'm not a patch job guy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I always like to work on what I think are the most important things that clear up misunderstandings, because there's obviously a lot of that out there. Uh, yeah. A lot of misinformation out there, um, which, you know, I could get in, I could use our entire conversation just talking about the function of the spine as an example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, most people, um, talk simply turn but but there's more involved in that there's also side bend and there's also extension in the spine mm -hmm. and then you have to understand the segments that are extending and what someone may be lacking when a person is turning in flexion what that basically means is that when they get to the top of the backswing they're going to have an angulation away from a straight line that you might have drawn it uh, on their left side of the dress the upper body is going to be angled away and that makes it difficult to control the low point of the golf club 
uh, which is my first fundamental. So I, I teach three fundamentals. Yeah, well, I was one, about to say, I'm glad you're going there because that, that's the one thing after I after I found your videos and, and I looked through them and what I loved was, you know, the teacher in me is all about the understanding, well, the student coming away with the information that they understand enough so they can apply it if necessary to themselves. Um, but then also how with everything you post, there is a lesson behind it, which I appreciate. And so I looked into you some more and that's when I reached out when on your website, you have your three, your true fundamentals, as you call them. Yes. And, and I do want to, I did want to touch on those before we got into the few swings that, that I had talked to you about. And the first one you talked about was the ability to hit the ground in the same place every time <laughs> or, or, or land, should I say, because sometimes we don't hit the ground, but, but just embellish on that slightly for, for me, please. Yeah. I don't think you can play, play good golf if you don't have the ability to be able to hit the ground in the same place every single time. So that's the very first thing that I look at with people because invariably their, their, their club is hitting the ground or not hitting the ground all over the place. Yeah. So whatever we have to do uh, to improve them, to be able to achieve that particular goal is to me, the first thing I work on. It's, second is obviously being able to control the, or being able to hit the ball far enough to play the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the third one is, controlling the curve and that's a little bit misunderstood because for so many years we were misled um you know by organizations or others that assumed that the club face was responsible for the curvature on the ball and that the path was responsible for the start direction of the ball versus the differential between the club face position at impact and the path mm -hmm. creating whatever amount of curve that we're trying mm -hmm. to produce well look you make it sound super simple and and what i do or what i'd love to do because you talk about a drill let's say there's because i'm sure when you list your true fundamentals there's a few folks go me uh yeah me and me and then they're like well dang i don't get access to bob right away because maybe i, have, I can get an online lesson but i haven't yet um a, qu a quick drill an idea to, to just make sure you land in the right place what, what sort of drill would you just share i know it's kind of generic but do you have something to that effect yeah i think i think uh obviously uh at impact, we're going to have the majority of our weight on our lead side. Uh -huh. So I don't think it's uh, uh, too far of a stretch to be able to make short swings with more weight left. All right. not necessarily, it's not necessarily that you would, you know, you're going to have some pressure shift in the backswing, but you have to be able to get to your left side. That's why basically in teaching, there's three posts. You can have left post, center post, and right mm -hmm. post. Yep. And the Hall of Fame is made up of all three, Johnny Miller being a left post or Nancy Lopez being a left post and, you know, Tiger being centered. But regardless of that, um, one of the drills that I might use is, is taking uh, a towel, uh, laying it flat on the ground, six inches behind the golf ball. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, and gradually moving it a little bit closer. I mean, you, you know, I don't think any too many people are able to get it close enough. But I mean, Mac could take an alignment rod. And, you know, and stick it an inch and a half or two inches behind the golf ball and still hit the golf ball without any alignment, right? Yeah, no kidding. Hey, I, 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 you know, power is a big watchword in our game right now. In fact, if you turn on the internet and you type in golf instruction, you're going to hear about wrist flexion and you're going to be about rotation and power or speed. Um, right. the, the power, I saw a very interesting thing the other day where Arcos had assembled data and basically took the average drive of men and women. And, and I, th I think power is relative because from those numbers, when I showed them to a lot of golfers, they were like, wow, that's less than I thought. Uh, I, I'd love your quick commentary there because power is functional, but understanding of what thresholds are, I think is crucial because otherwise you get someone swinging like a banshee and then they don't land in the right place. Right. Yeah. And I think most people um, have a very embellished belief in the distance. They really hit it. <laughs> Amen. Um, right. uh, you know, they, they, you know, that's most of them are standing too close to it after they hit it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, you know, but, I but there's no, there's company. no question about that. I mean, if you, if you look at uh, manufacturers, uh, when they're selling drivers every year, there's a new driver that comes out that hits it four yards, eight yards, 10 yards further. We'll just take 10 as an example. And the, They've been saying that for 20 years. So if that's true, I'm hitting it 200 yards farther than I did 10 years ago. Oh, yeah. This is not the truth. Yeah. But that's how you sell golf clubs. Yeah, I mean, well, look, I love what you say about the truth and the true fundamentals and stuff. And then you're very transparent. And while I'm talking this, I'm just going to share the screen. So for the folks listening on audio only, 
um, you, you can now see what Bob and I are going to have a, a, a little look at. Um, so as I share the screen here, I'm going to go to um, essentially your Twitter uh, handle. Hold on a second. Yeah, here we go. And I'm going to now pull up these videos that I was wanting to talk to you about. You can see the screen. Is that correct now? I can. You can? You, yes, or you can, you, you can? Yes, I can see it. Okay, perfect. Let me close this down here and open up what I want to show folks. So this is just on your Instagram handle. And, and the first one I pitched, because look, if there's anyone who moves golf and anyone who talk, if, if uh, conversations come up in golf, it's about Tiger Woods, whether it's just how great he is or whether, you know, it's comparisons to Jack Nicklaus or injuries or whatever the case might be. Uh, and so you've got lots of Tiger Woods videos in your um, selection here, but I picked this one and it's going in slow motion now. It's him all in black. It looks like Torrey Pines when we were there maybe last year or year before. And you talk about compressing irons. So uh, you can just talk about this a little bit and I'll let it play back and forth and sort of share with the viewer what they can learn and we'll do our best to describe it for the audio listener. Well, I think the first thing, if you if you can stop him at P4, there we go. Uh, for the audience, P4 would be the top of the backswing. Okay, all right. Hold on one second. Yeah, I think I can get there. Although it's kind of hard to control here on Instagram. All right, so we'll, we'll let it run, and when we get him to Okay, the so, but, but, but basically at P4, uh, number one, Tiger has a very, very centered fit pivot. He hasn't had any translation of his hub to the right. Mm -hmm. You can see his back is relatively straight up and down. That's the extension piece. Right. If he was turning in flexion, his back would be angled away from the target and his head would be outside his right foot. Yeah. And I think that's the problem with, with, with many people. Arm structure is perfect. I wanted to um, say that too, because as I look at that, I, I've, I've always loved, like you describe Tiger's situation and for the audio listener, he essentially looks triangulated. His head's between his feet. He's turned around that. And the arms are out to his right-hand side. It doesn't look like there's any, any real stretch to make the arms go farther than what the pivots allowed them. Yeah, a lot of that has to do, you know, I think, you know, in teaching, again, so many te people teach um, people to keep their left arm straight. The left arm isn't the issue. It's the right arm. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. minimizing the amount of bend in the right arm. That's how you can achieve what he's achieved there is not allowing the right arm to hinge beyond a, a certain degree. And I think on the tour, it's generally around 74, 75 degrees right in that area. And people yeah. think it's 90, but it's not. Yeah. Primarily because the distance from your wrist to your elbow is greater than the distance from your elbow to your shoulder. So um, 74, 75 degrees is about right. But he's got great width right there. And, and, and he's and with that centered pivot, he's just set in a perfect position to be able to control the low point of the club. He'll initiate his downswing with a lateral move to the left. Uh -huh. That that in some ways is getting taught out of golf. I mean, so there's no question you can have too much lateral but you can't play golf with no ladder uh, or any other sport for that matter. A big so game. now he's in P at P six. That's a great delivery position. He's retained the angles in his wrist, right wrist, what I call the right wrist flying wedge or the right arm flying wedge, the right wrist is bent backwards um, shoulders at this point, And this is a real critical thing are relatively level. One of the faults I find, um, you know, I get a lot of tour players who are having ball striking issues and invariably it's the same thing every single time. They have too much secondary tilt or right axis tilt on the downswing. Um, they don't get their shoulders in this more level position at P6, yeah. mm -hmm. which is how you can control the low point and be able to bottom the club out farther forward. I'm, I'm and glad, then from this I, may I may roll fast. I'm glad you talk about that as we look at him with sort of hands for the audio listeners, hands over thighs. The club shaft is, is in beautiful shape, uh, parallel with the ground, parallel with the target line. And the hips have opened up, but the chest is quite square. And I'm glad you referenced the rotation. And I want you to camp there for a bit because you're so right, folks. Your rotation, they your power. And then they're turning open so hard, so early with their chest that the whole thing is just a mess. Pathwise, se sequencing, you name it, everything goes wrong. Yeah, I think the best players, uh, you won't see their chest, or I would say their – I don't want to say chest. I'll say their shoulders – are either going to be relatively square at impact or at the most maybe 10 or 12 degrees open. Mm -hmm. uh, the hips, you're going to see a big variety in that. And that's pretty player dependent. I mean, the players that tend to be more shut, like a Dustin Johnson, uh, any of those players, John Rahm, are going to be much more open in their hips to hold the face off. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
you know, a person who uh, Johnny Miller is an example. If he was that open in his hips, um, you know, he'd be living in right field. But he wouldn't be. Yeah, he wouldn't be Johnny Miller. <laughs> he wouldn't be Johnny Miller. He might be Alice Miller, but not Johnny yeah. Miller. So from there, yeah. I'm going to let Tiger scroll down to contact a little bit and stall him there. Now, yeah, it's perfect. We talk about shaft lean. Let's let's just cover this picture and then we'll move on to the next one. Yeah. So again, weights on the left foot. Uh, left hip is externally rotated. Right foot is banking, which yeah. I think is a really important thing. Not talked about a whole lot. And obviously, he's maintained the wedge in his his right wrist, so he has the shaft lean necessary. Um, he's going to, he's going to hit the ground two to four inches on the target side of the ball. I'm glad you, I'm, I'm glad you talk about how that shaft lean is created. And it's not like the handle is pulled on that, that, that shaft lean is created because the trailing wrist, the right wrist hasn't, you know, flicked extensively and early and, and, and it's created more by just retention of that and body rotation as opposed to a big hard pull of the handle, which would like 100%. I yeah. mean, it's, it's, it's like throwing a ball. I mean, if you throw a ball, there's not a pulling motion. Yeah. But your elbow is leading your wrist, and then your wrist is going to release at a later point more out front. The same in a golf swing. It's no different if you were throwing a – I was a baseball player, and if you're picking up a ground ball, third base or shortstop, and throwing it to second or first, you'd make a very similar motion to what Tiger just did in his swing there. Yeah. All right, moving along. The boy, This boy has grabbed the, the world by storm. My brother Trevor was on the show a few weeks ago, if you haven't listened, folks, and he spoke about Tom Kim, and he spoke more about Tom's – mental acumen and emotional balance but this year is a video of tom hitting two iron into the final green that saturday uh, afternoon to win the point which essentially you know kept the internationals relevant for a while and i could just open disclosure i called tom en route to that victory um at the Wyndham championship in 22 and was on the golf course with him and this guy hits long irons as accurately as anyone i've ever seen and i've seen a few um i'd love you to comment some on just this action if nothing else, just the rhythm of it, because he seems unhurried and unconcerned that he doesn't hit the ball as far as some of the guys he's competing against. Yeah, but if he, if he make he can make that up by uh, you know greens and regulation. I'm I'm pretty excited about him because I have sort of a personal stake. One of my closest friends of my life is a golf pro from California named Lou Scubbern, and his son is Joe Scubbern, mm -hmm. and Joe is now on the bag for Tom. Uh, uh, he was on the bag for 13 years with Ricky, but now he's with, 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 he told me he was going to try it for four. And I, <laughs> I, I said, what are you nuts? You know? So it, it's know. good. Yeah. I like, I like his golf swing a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. there, there, there's an awful lot, as you point out, his rhythm, his tempo is quite good. Um, club positions, uh, at the top of his back swing, uh, he's got a little more of what I, call a one plane swing where his left arm is a little more on his shoulder plane. It's not yeah. way above his shoulder plane. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes connection on the downswing a lot easier than when you get extremely vertical with the arms. Uh, yeah. That position I've held him at the top for the audio listeners. Uh, comment on the, you, you know, you can see the big rotation in the chest. His arms are a bit more free and have swung into a beautiful position. You document, but I love the sort of seated rotated look there across his especially his, his hips, but especially in his right side there, he's really allowed his legs to move underneath him. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're keen on that, given what I've learned about you. 100%. Yeah. Um, I want to let him toggle down just to sort of around impact, and we're going to miss it because it's a full speed swing. Folks, you can go and check this out on uh, on Bob's Instagram post. Um, you just said, yeah, there was no real commentary. It was just Tom Kim down the line, Iron. But if as you watch this and you just let it go back and forth, people it's so beautiful just to kind of get timing and sequencing and get a visual thereof now this... i kind of do a mixture where i'll make commentary mm -hmm. sometimes and sometimes i'll just post swings i mean it's it's i think it's fun sometimes just to look at swings and i think there's there's far more commonality in swings than there's differences yeah uh, I, I, and certainly in the way the body moves uh, obviously there's going to be differences in hands and arms mm -hmm. uh, but the, the body motions of all these guys are uh, exquisite well, speaking of body motions, the next picture I've got here is Adam Scott. And the footage you have is Adam essentially hitting an iron shot, not over the top of the camera, but he's coming at the camera. And I, I just loved this image. And I wanted you to comment because to me, it tells the story of the sequencing of the body parts. It tells the story of that spine angle you referenced that you could talk about for hours. And of course, people think of Adam Scott and, you know, it's like a golf swing that fell out of heaven. So what's your thoughts here? 
Oh, I would agree. Uh, I, I think Adam has been a, um, has, got, has got one of the great swings. Uh, you know, he's made some, he's made a few changes over the years, which were subtle changes. Mm-hmm. You know, he originally started out working with Butch. Yeah. Uh, and then he went back to his brother-in-law, uh, you know, and one of, one of the changes he made, I think the biggest change he made, in my opinion, that really, really helped him the most was a setup change. Yeah. He used to set up with his back arched up and his, and his chin way up. And I'm a big believer in what's called foveal vision, which is the center think. core of the eyes looking at an object okay. and looking at the golf ball. So that if you, if you were to look at old pictures of him, you'd see the chin up. You look at all the pictures today, you'll see that his eyes and head are focused directly on the golf ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, this picture here, I mean, all the movements are exquisite. He's side bending the left on the backswing, downswing. You can see the club shallowing a little bit as he comes down. Left knee, right knee. There, there goes the left knee as he moves. Left hip. Uh, awesome. And now he's going to be extending as he goes through. Chest extending, pelvis extending. Club releasing. Terrific. You know what? Um, I know Adam well. You know, my brother is the same sort of age. And I love your observation about the posture because everyone watching or listening to this could improve their posture and put themselves then on the front foot to making – this golf swing with less compensation. Um, but the one thing about Adam, uh, I've, whenever I'm with him on the range, he spends most of his time, Bob, hitting balls. And, and he'll, I would say, almost half of the practice, just with some sort of iron, just going like three-quarter speed. Not going tournament speed or flat out. He's just sort of caressing balls away there and allowing things to organize. And I think that, and I'd love your take, is a great thing that, um, folks listening to this, watching this could take away where when you're on the range, don't, 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 don't go full blooded all the time. You know, just swing the club and feel movements, feel how things harmonize together. Yeah. I think the key thing you're trying to do there is you're trying to coordinate the movements of your body and your hands and arms, and you need to yeah. go at a speed that you can do that. And, you know, gradually a person can learn to speed that up, but you know, uh, it isn't, it, it, you know, his golf, he, he's, his driver speed is about what what one nineteen in that area. Yeah, he's actually picked up a little bit. Yeah, he's he lost some speed, but now it's way up there, and he's really excited about that. But again, when he's practicing, he's not going at that speed. Well, I mean, he'll no, hit like that before he goes and plays, but that's not the practice. No, he, he's uh, beautiful positions throughout that golf swing, though. It's fantastic. Yeah. All right, let's let's scroll right along. Um, so I asked you about. A tiger, Tom Kim, and now Adam, and and I've just scroll, got to scroll down a little bit. And for the folks watching, we've got Ch- Charlie Woods, we've got Sean O'Hare there, got some Arnold Palmer, Justin Rose, John Rahm, um, and, and all of these. Some of them have illustrations that Bob's put in there with circles and lines and stuff. We have Trevino. We're going to get to in a minute. I am looking for Ben Hogan because this video you had it was a black and white. Um, and it's yep. a beautiful image of Hogan where he's sort of looking over his head and down his target line. And it's just to me exquisitely, I think I might've gone past it there. Um, I'm going to scroll back. It exquisitely talks and shows how the body rotates, how the right elbow delivers. Um, I'm going to find this here. Yeah, he was uh, he was in such a great delivery position with his right 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 elbow. It was unbelievable. Hold on a second. I think I'm close. This is hard, folks. Now the pressure of me finding this with all these swing videos as I scroll. This is on you, Mark. <laughs> yeah, this is completely on me. Okay. Um, while I'm looking for this for the audio listener, I want to ask you about this because to a lot of the fans and certainly to me, you know that book, The Modern Fundamentals by Hogan. It was kind of our Bible, if you will. And there's an image of the way Hogan gripped it from the modern fundamentals. I've just scrolled by. Uh, Talk about that some, because it's such a great book, but I think, and here's another illustration by Ravielli, which is going past where you've taken an image of Hogan swinging and the drawing, and you've shown that there's actually a little bit of a difference. So maybe some misunderstandings that could come from that book, um, referencing what you talked about misunderstanding just. Yeah. With his elbows. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I, starting out with the grip, uh, I think Hogan did a, did a masterful job of explaining that, that you squeeze with the two middle fingers of your right hand. That increases the pressure of the right palm against the left thumb, yeah. uh, which is pressure point one. Pressure point two is the last three fingers of the left hand. Um, 
the one, the, the pressure point three is the right, and, th and this is a big one. I mean, I, I just don't think that there's enough talk about the right index finger against the backside of the shaft. Um, yeah, and that's, that that's is, something, there's a beautiful image in that book where you can almost see the force that that right forefinger, that pad of the, the forefinger is putting on the side of the shaft. It's incredible. 100%. Oh. 100%. Not only is it incredible, I mean, it's one of the ways you, you, you can produce lag, but it's also... You know, I have a, nice, a neat video of Johnny Miller where he talks about, you know, when he's trying to, to work the ball in any way, he does it with that right knuckle. You yeah. know, whether he, whether he's moving it slightly closed or slightly open, however he's moving that right knuckle. But that's that's critical. And I just don't think there's enough emphasis or talk on that. I mean, I see everybody with a long, a long right thumb and the, and the index fingers pulled up against the middle finger. Um, you want to get some space. Uh, I, John Daly has actually... Um, you can fit two fingers between his index finger and his middle finger. Yeah. That's how much, how long he has that index finger. Okay. Now I've, I've, I've given up on the Hogan conversation while you're describing this Trevino <laughs> image, because everyone, I learned from Gary player a lot. And Mr. Player said, look, if you want to learn about ball striking, go and spend a day with Lee Trevino. Hunter, yeah. He's, he's amazing. I was, I was fortunate to, uh, to practice with him a few times, which was interesting at the, in the old days at the country club of Miami, but we've got uh, an image here for the audio listener of Trevino at contact. And you've drawn a line essentially up the shaft of the club and it's pointing sort of towards where his belly button would be. Obviously he's rotated around the hip area there, but describe this and describe and, and someone. Well, yeah, comments was the, like, the interesting thing that, about yeah. that, that line is that that line was actually drawn in a dress. Oh, yeah, okay, so he's returned to the same place. Which is highly unusual. Bob Jones I mean, did the same thing, incidentally. B Bobby Jones, with all of those languid movements of his, because Jones, my hero, would hit that same spot every single time. So handle and shaft, all the club head are matching where it was at address. Yeah, I think, I think most players, in fact, just about every tour player is going to be slightly above that. Mm -hmm. The average player is way above that. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, what he's, what he's done here is he's, he's, he's gone back into flexion. That's why his chest is down. Yeah. Uh, left hip is internally rotated. Um, the, the right, right forearm or right wrist flying wedge is intact. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that, that golf ball is only going one place. Yeah. And it's going in the same place every time. <laughs> and, I want uh, to, you know, I look at this picture and for the folks watching on YouTube, this is a beautiful model because as uh, Bob points out, the chest is sort of covering the ball, the lower body's open, uh, the elbow and the shaft are in almost a straight line. It's beautiful. Um, a drill to sort of simulate this. I, I would be inclined to say, hey, for a little while, go and hit balls off a tight lie and then go and hit balls off a ball that's a lie where the ball's below your feet. Would you be, be so inclined or, or something, you know, just to simulate this great contact position for the listeners? Well, I think a ball below your feet is is always terrific because yeah. it's uh, if if you're tilting right too much, you're going to stick it in the ground for sure. But I, I kind of use a three step hip drill a lot of times when I teach this. I'll actually have the person set up, and and I'll even have them do it at home, mm -hmm. where they set the club face against the door jam, and they apply pressure against the All club right. head shaft and use their body in that in that sense where the left hips externally rotating and they're getting they're getting that same feel or look uh and i'll actually have them hit balls where they'll do a do a rehearsal a rehearsal and then maybe a hit uh trying to produce that same feel fantastic uh, folks i'm trying one more time for the hogan image. ah there it is i knew i'd find it <laughs> see never give up there's a lesson for golf folks just keep on trying all right this video you posted this and i cannot tell a lie I took a, a screen recording of this. It's stored on my phone because for so many golfers, for the listeners, go and look at this on YouTube, but we're looking down almost over the top of Ben Hogan's right shoulder. 100%. Just to watch how that right arm delivers. Now it's been propelled by the rotation. This image is incredible. How about you go and talk about it some, please? Well, I think, I think uh, that would be the goal of any human who plays golf. Yeah, you know, exactly. the, the, the club shaft on the downswing is in, you know, gets in at, in perfect alignment at P5.5 uh, with his right forearm. Um, you know, you, you just hit on it right there. It kind of stopped for a minute. Uh, it's just in a perfect delivery position. 
look at that right wrist. You can see that right wrist, how it's bent backwards. Um, and then you can see the rotation in that lower body, uh, but he's creating some separation there with his shoulders and his hips. Mm. How, about, how about this? Um, you know that uh, the action of that trailing arm you so beautifully reference um, with how the elbow moves, how its relationship to the side, the right wrist, the flying wedge, as you call it. Um, it, it smacks to me, and Hogan was quoted as saying that when he watched great ball strikers, it never looked like they were in a rush to hit the golf ball. And then he watched golfers who weren't so great and they'd all be in a hurry to get from the top of the backswing down to contact. So there's this hitting impulse, if you will. It looks to me like he was never in a rush to unfold that right side at all. And he was almost letting the pivot drive the maneuver. Uh, do I sound crazy or are you with me? No, I think, I think uh, you know, I have to continually, continually remind students that the idea is to swing the club, not hit the ball. Yeah, exactly. You know, because I think the impulse is always to hit um, rather than swing the club. Uh, but, you know, Hogan, Hogan did so many rehearsals over and over and over and over again um, to achieve what he did and become, you know, I mean, the greatest ball striker in the history of the game. The only one that I, I was fortunate to, to have played quite a bit of golf with and knew quite well was Mo Norman. Yeah. Uh, and I think Mo was um, equally adept at ball striking, uh, different different kind of motion. But uh, all the great players, uh, their right arm operates just like that is. Yeah. Um, one more thing, I'll let you go. Thanks for your time. In the back of the modern fundamentals, now I talked about how it's easily misunderstood, and yours truly did, because I went and tried to hold it like Hogan. And trust me, uh, with that weak grip, I hit the ball to right field like you could set your wristwatch on it. Um, so, but in the back of the book, there's a sequence and you talked about the hundreds and thousands of rehearsals he did where the image was just him sort of swinging the club back and forth, sort of from about nine o'clock to about three o'clock on your wristwatch and the body and the arms were moving in harmony. And I feel like for anyone listening to this, that's an awesome thing to do because so many folks are trying to rotate or pull. So they just, they, they almost lose the, the forest for the trees really. Yeah, they don't get the they don't get the hands and arms matched up with the body at all. Yeah, either the the arms and hands are lagging too far behind, or they're too far ahead, uh, or that you know they they totally lack the correct body pivot. Period. Yeah, that is a great image in there, though. I mean, I think you know he he referenced it as you know basically hip high to hip high, and that's what it looked like. Yeah. So speaking of lots of great images thousands on bob, bob grissett's uh, instagram handle for the folks listening uh, i'm sure they want to learn more tell the people where they can go on the website or whatever is if they want to book online lessons with you those whatsapp lessons you talk or share the social media please where they can go and find more of this stuff and and get some lessons from you from some of the images you share yeah i'm on uh, i'm on all social media instagram twitter and facebook uh i think in terms of golf uh, the vast majority I find of golfers are on Instagram. Yeah, uh, it's definitely the best of the uh, of the mediums. Uh, my website is uh, uh, my name. It's bobgrissettgolf.com. dot com. Mm -hmm. uh, on there, I will have instructions on um, how to do lessons uh, online or live lessons. Either way, how to book. Um, I find one of the more important things that. Uh, this is for anyone who's ever, ever sending anyone video is they, they never get the down the line video, right? <laughs> In the right you, place. <laughs> True. Uh -huh. You always, you, you know, just as a reminder, the, the camera needs to be behind the hands, mm -hmm. not behind the ball or in between the ball and the feet. Yeah. It needs to be directly behind the hands to get the, to get a correct view. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I, I do. I, I actually, uh, uh, I think for anyone who does online lessons, it increased spectacularly during COVID yeah. uh, and it's just continued. And like I said, I have, I have clients all over the world. So they can book those through your website, Bob, Bob Grissett. Yeah, they can a hundred percent. Yeah. Well, I'm thankful that we could sneak you off the driving range. Cause I know there are people waiting. Um, thanks for your time more than anything. Thanks for your insight. And with your willingness to take time to assemble the stuff and then put it back out there for, um, you know, the fans, the viewers, the, the, the learners, because I know the labor of love that is, and, and I'm thankful to you. And I know a lot of folks are, are thankful to you for doing it too. 
Well, I really appreciate that, Mark. I'm happy to do it. And it's, it's, it's a big joy in my life to, to be able to do it. And I will continue. <laughs>